Thank you. Thank you for that. I uh, just want to touch on a bit of a, a bit more of an open study today. Uh, I guess we're all familiar with um, the aspect of people worshiping animals and plants, and in fact, even worshiping pieces of stone and wood in the past. And uh, we have uh, an individual who we worship. We don't worship the creation; we worship the Creator, Yehovah Sabaoth. And uh, we are pleased to be able to come before him and participate with him on the days he set apart specifically for studying and learning his ways, by reading his word, and applying it in our lives because we can have all the knowledge of, of you know, with a, with a type of a memory. And if we don't do anything with it, we're worse than useless. So it's um, important that we have these Sabbaths and can study a bit. So I guess we're all familiar with the New World Order and what it's bringing about. It uh, started in, the, in the, these new per time periods with the League of Nations at the beginning of the 1900s and then uh, developed into the, ended up in the United Nations when the League of Nations and the wars that it precipitated fell apart. And uh, the United Nations and the League of Nations are all part of wh what is being put together behind the scenes by the uh, synagogue of Satan. And I believe we, we understand all of this, but I just want to touch on it a little bit uh, today uh, because uh, comments often come about how Islam fits into these end time events of a, of a you know, a, a worldwide war and famine and uh, destruction of the whole planet with, uh, you know, the waters turning to blood, red tides, etc. So a couple of uh, articles on Islam or, or on the website because Islam uh, was basically formed from the Old Testament and, uh, and it isn't understood by most adherents to modern day Islam and so you can just uh, maybe review that when you have time. So what I'd like to do for an introduction is uh, start with Job 38. Now uh, Job, his friends, had been uh, condemning him a little bit and calling him a sinner because he was uh, sick and had uh, lost all his possessions and uh, everything because I don't know how many of you, but most of us have all been challenged and told the same thing. Well, if you're, if you're sick or injured somehow or, or poor, uh, you must be sinning, which is a total, absolute lie. And we'll see who says so shortly. But it's, uh, as you can see, human nature affected by sin and, and perhaps absent with God's Holy Spirit really hasn't changed at all. Uh, uh, you know, from Job's friends here, you have uh, Elihu wanting to speak on God's behalf. And uh, so it's, uh, this though is a, is a good introduction to um, what's coming by law. You know, America has it by law. Well, we're calling it law because it's all been done by executive orders and, and presidential decrees, which are only have a degree of law until Congress uh, votes it out or that type of thing. So this is all the will of people as to how they want to administer themselves uh, as, as to what they're going to, you know, going to follow. You know, we recently spent a bit of time on, on uh, communism, which all of the Western Hemisphere is governed by, even though they, they don't seem to understand that, that um, uh, you you're <coughs> follow every one of the ten articles of, of communism in your human-made legislation and keep none, none of God's ten commandments. Some people do, very few and uh, pray for all of those who do, whether they're your friends or, your, or not your friends, it doesn't matter. Just pray for them uh, as well because they're going to come under a more serious assault down the roads when you read what's in the Earth Charter and the Earth Dialogues and some of these other things that are, re require you to um, 
to worship your creation, or, or the Almighty's creation. So anyway, um, Job 38. Jehovah answered Job from the whirlwind. He said, Who is this who obscures my counsel with ignorant words? Get ready to answer me like a man. When I question you, you will inform me. Where were you when I established the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who fixed its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line? Kala ka, across it. What supports its foundations? Who laid its cornerstone? Well, the Lucifers. So there's more than one Lucifer. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So you could conclude from this that there are two creations, the spirit world, which was made before the physical, because here we have the, the creation of the physical universe and the plural sons of Elohim are shouting for joy. And there's at least two morning stars or lucifers, which are a, a rank of, of the angelic beings. Now, who enclosed the sea behind doors when it burst from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, the thick darkness its blanket, when I determined the boundaries and put its bars and doors in place, when I declared, you may come this far, ocean, but no farther, your proud waves must stop here. Have you, you, Job, you know, have you, human being, ever in your life commanded the morning or assigned the dawn its place so it may seize the edges of the earth and shake the wicked out of it. The earth is changed as clay by a seal. Its hills stand out like the folds of a garment. Light is withheld from the wicked and the arm raised in violence is broken. Have you traveled to the sources of the sea or walked in the depths of the ocean? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Have you seen the gates of death's shadow? Have you comprehended the extent of the earth? Now, every time we make a new microscope or a new magnifying glass, we find there's more to earth than was understood. Certainly a lot more than before the, you know, the evolutionists started producing their written statements 200 years ago, claiming you're billions of years old and you descended from a rock or a monkey or something else, which is also is a lie. So don't let yourself be bamboozled by people with degrees after their names and who can pronounce, you know, pronounce the large $10 words with uh, anti-scriptural gibberish, because that's what it is. It's very easy, and we're all subject to it. We covered a while back, you know, the, the, the problems with brainwashing because it's, we're easily subject to it. Often the more simply this, this falsities are presented, the more easily we're conned. So just to be on your guard, you don't have to fight everything all the time, but you should be aware that you are a target. So, okay. Are you familiar with the path to its home? Don't you know? Oh, the question was, do you know where darkness lives? Where is the road uh, to the home of light? Light moves. 186 or odd thousand miles per second. I forget what it is there now. But light actually moves. Here it's declared to have a home. Darkness doesn't move, which is an interesting, you know, physical property. Darkness doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't move. Are you familiar with the path to its home, darkness? Don't you know? You were already born. You have lived so long. You know, at the time of Job, they were living, you know, still living for a couple hundred years. Jacob said he was, he was uh, only 130 whatever years when he was questioned by Pharaoh. Um, and uh, where he hadn't lived as long as, as the beings that came across in the flood who were still alive or at least one of them was, maybe it was Shem. Have you entered into the place where the snow was stored? Have you seen the storehouses of hail, which I reserved?